I'm Megan Lavin from AllergyAwesomeness.com and thanks for joining me for this month's Megan's Minute video with Allergic Living. Since it's already August and back to school, we're going to be talking 504 plans. First off, what is a 504 plan, right? Well, a 504 plan is a written document that spells out what accommodations and safety measures will be in place for a food allergic child while they're at school. It's called a 504 plan because it falls under Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. In order to agree and determine what will be in the plan, you have a 504 meeting where you meet with the teacher and sometimes the principal and other staff at your school that will be working with your food allergic child. Both of my sons have had a 504 plan since kindergarten. And because we've moved around a lot, I've had to have a lot of 504 meetings. In fact, five times, because every time we move to a new school, we've got to do it again. So let me share what I have learned in having to do the 504 meeting so many times, and hopefully it will help you. First off, if you're nervous, I want you to know that is normal. I was raised in a culture where I was told to not rock the boat and that asking for special circumstances was being seen as difficult and it's just better to go with the flow. So having to stick up for my son and for myself and ask for things was a really hard pill to swallow. And it's definitely been a learning curve for sure. But if anything good has come, that silver lining from food allergies is that I've learned how to advocate for myself and my sons. It doesn't mean I still sometimes have to like psych myself up and take deep breaths and that sometimes I still don't get nervous, but I have gotten much better at asking for and standing my ground when it comes to my children. And you can too, because if I can do it, you can do it. Another thing I do is to dress for success. I'm usually in my mom uniform, but I've noticed when I dress nicely and come with pen and paper to take notes, I show them that I am serious, I'm much more likely to be taken serious. One other thing that has helped me navigate how to ask for and negotiate and be clear was reading a book called Crucial Conversations. It really gave me some great tools and confidence and I'd highly recommend it if you're in the same boat as I was. One thing I've done is to set a friendly tone and to put the teacher and principal at ease is one time I brought in a bar of my son's safe chocolate. I gave it out to each of them and it was a really nice token and gesture to start the meeting with on a good foot. Now I am going to share exactly what accommodations we ask for in my son's 504 plan in case it helps you think of anything you want to add to yours. Keep in mind though that everyone's allergies and situations are different so my plan may not work for you. Also, many people put in their 504 plan that their classroom needs to be a completely food-free classroom due to cross-contact concerns. We are willing to allow food and work around it for my son, so that may be something we also could differ in. But here it is, just in case it helps. Are you ready? We ask for soap and water hand washing for all students at the beginning of class and again after lunch. Hand sanitizer does not qualify. Epinephrine and his asthma inhaler will be in my son's backpack at all times. His backpack will be carried by a teacher, trained staff, or my son when leaving the classroom for an extended period such as field trips. It doesn't need to move with him from like art to PE though, it stays in the classroom. The teacher and specialty teachers will be trained to administer epinephrine. Side note, make sure they're trained in the type of auto injector brand your child will actually be carrying. I will, and then they do notify me of this once it's done, and this could include bus drivers too. All subs and specialty teachers will be notified of the 504 plan and accommodations. If my son is feeling unwell, an adult must accompany him to the bathroom or office just to avoid him possibly passing out alone in the bathroom, worst case scenario. Only an adult can administer the auto injector, and my son is allowed to administer his asthma inhaler as needed because he's really got that down and feels confident. I will receive notification 24 hours in advance if food is to be served, so I have time to find a replacement and I'm not scrambling the day of. I will provide a bag of safe replacement treats for the teacher to always keep on hand, so that's my responsibility. If an unsafe birthday treat is served, my son will be given one of his safe treats and hand washing will happen for all students after eating. Several teachers in the past have just given out the birthday treats as they're leaving the classroom for the day to avoid the mess and the hand washing. So you can work with the teachers to make that work. If food is sent home, I will be notified by phone or in person that he has food in his possession so I can check the label, which has been really good to know so I can make sure that even if the teacher sends it safe, we can ensure it's safe. 
If his safe bag treat runs out, I will be notified so that I can refill it and he won't be missing out. If there are crafts or activities that involve the handling of food items that he's allergic to, again, I will be given that 24 hour notice to be able to find a safe replacement activity. And then I will be given the opportunity to participate in class parties and food functions, which also really helps me control the environment. If food is served in class, all tables will be wiped down with a bleach wet wipe to avoid cross contact afterwards. I also find um, it takes care and communication after the 504 is set to ensure it's being followed. I try to not only expect the teacher to go above and beyond for my son, but that I am willing to help her as well. So let's say if she needs extra school supplies, a volunteer or other things, I try to make sure it goes both ways and that I am also willing to help her too. I also provide her with a list of safe treats and snacks. So that way if she wants to provide treats, which often happens, she doesn't have to try and guess what that would be or if it isn't truly safe. I take out the guesswork. I also try to build a team mentality that we're in this together for my sons. I try to be courteous and respond promptly when she reaches out with questions. For many teachers, this is their first time working with a child with so many food allergies and I recognize that I am teaching them. I am paving the way for the next food allergic child they'll be teaching in future years and that I want to set a good positive tone for them. I have several friends who are teachers and I recognize what a burden is placed on their backs, the teaching and all the things that go into it and parents and testing, they have so much to juggle and I try to remember that they are just people who are doing their best. When I come to them with that attitude instead of like a demanding one, I find they're much more likely to be compliant and want to work with me. I know it can be nerve wracking expecting someone else to take care of our child, but we can do it. I wish for all of us to have a safe school year and don't forget that on top of doing all this 504 prep work, that you don't forget to role play with your child different scenarios so that way they feel included in the prep work and they understand what they need to do and who they need to talk to should certain situations come up so they feel prepared too. that it's not just between us adults. And lastly, I'm sure with all the excellent prep work you're about to embark on, remember how important it is to help your child feel confident in their own ability to handle themselves that we're not their only saviors. I try to instill confidence in my son by saying things like, I trust you to take care of yourself and you know your body best. If you feel something is off, you can trust yourself. By helping them feel confident in them, it'll help them so much more in their journey of learning to advocate for themselves when you're not there. We also do daily affirmations before he leaves for the school bus to ensure he's leaving for the day, feeling like he can tackle that day. We allergy parents are stronger than we think and our kids are capable way more than we sometimes give them credit for. We can do this school year, you guys. I'll see you next month on Megan's Minute. And if you've missed previous Megan's Minutes, be sure to check out the previous videos on Allergic Living's YouTube page. Remember to check the text below this video. There's tons of helpful links that Allergic Living has provided for 504 resources. We got this, guys.